Now, from Jackson 16 WAPT, Commitment 2023, conversation with the candidate. Good evening, I'm Erin Pickens. Welcome to our conversation with the candidate. This program is part of our commitment to you to keep you updated on the candidates in this year's election so you can make an informed decision on election day. Our conversation begins with Hines County Sheriff candidate Marshawn Chrysler. He served as interim Hines County Sheriff in late 2021. Chrysler most recently served as executive director of Henley Young Patton Juvenile Detention Center. He was also a Jackson City Councilman. We welcome Marshawn Chrysler. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you and the station for this opportunity, quite frankly. Um, my background is extensive in the realm of law enforcement and corrections. Um, just to take you back a bit, uh, I got started in my profession at the ripe old age of 19 when I joined the United States Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an infantryman and then I got retrained as a military police officer. Uh, I end up honorably discharging from the Marine after doing a tour in Iraq in the Persian Gulf War and transferred over to the Army and became a combat military policeman. And I got commissioned as an officer and then I became a commander, went back to Iraq, led troops downrange in Iraqi freedom. And by the grace of the Lord, we were able to bring them all back. And then when I got back from Iraqi freedom, I transferred to the Air Force and uh, retired as a major from the United States Air Force. And of course, during that time, a lot of, some of that was guard time, I was uh, employed with the Hines County Sheriff's Department from 1992 to roughly about 2010. So I got almost mm -hmm. 20 years of uh, correctional and law enforcement experience with the Hines County Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I, I served, as you said, as a city councilman uh, and uh, president of the city council. And so I did two terms as a council member, but I also did uh, a stint as the chief of police of the Utica Police Department, a small mm -hmm. rural town uh, farthest, farthest west of our county. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also served as a public safety commissioner mm -hmm. for the city of Jackson, where I had oversight, direct oversight over the Jackson Police Department and the Jackson Fire Department. So extensive career and not only law enforcement correction, but also in administration. I have about 15 years in administration. So you've seen a lot in several different capacities uh, at the Sheriff's Department under uh, former Sheriff Michael McMillan. Correct. So that, and you've seen a lot of changes over the years as well in law enforcement and in, in politics as well. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And uh, to speak to that is that, you know, everything evolves. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I say everything. Some people don't. And so we have to. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to be about evolution. And uh, uh, criminal justice system and law enforcement corrections are no uh, uh, different. And so one of the things I've seen change is that uh, people are starting to recognize now, Aaron, that police officers are not trained to be counselors. They're mm -hmm. not trained to be mental health providers. And so taking that into consideration, not only do we have the charge of coming up with crime prevention plans and uh, having uh, the aptitude and abilities to create policies that will make our community safer, we have to be open-minded enough to grow the tent. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is we have to be open to bringing in other experts in and, and, and their respective fields, right? So one of the things that I've been promoting in my campaign and my platform uh, certainly consists of is that we will expand that tent. We will develop a 21st century crime fighting plan where we bring in mental health providers to be able to talk to those patients uh, who we come across that mm -hmm. we may not, uh, we don't have the training uh, to be able to deal with. And then we're going to bring in social services providers, mm -hmm. social workers to come in and talk to these young people who we find is uh, elevating the crime rate all over America, quite frankly, because that's where a lot of our violent crimes uh, certainly uh, uh, are having, uh, are occurring at. Mm -hmm. And so those are the type of things I think that I've seen over my years uh, that are very important. And uh, educating the public is a big piece too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have operated for far too long uh, believing that the average citizen knows what the roles and responsibility of these positions that we see. Mm -hmm. And particularly with the Sheriff Department, I think there's been some misinformation uh, put out there for far too long that this is a super law enforcement job. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, the number one job of a Sheriff is corrections. It is the jail. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people, uh, use this uh, uh, example, it's kind of a comical example, Aaron, uh, we all are old enough to remember Andy Griffith. <laughs> and uh, Andy Griffith was a uh, known sheriff uh, in, uh, on the sitcoms. And what you are uh, able to take away from that sitcom is almost 100% of that show was shot in the jail. <laughs> that's and true. because that's his number one responsibility yeah. if you look yeah. at it. And so, yes, there are law enforcement responsibilities for sheriffs, but that equates to about 25%. And 75% mm -hmm. uh, are dedicated to a jail. And so one of the things I've seen over my career, we're talking about evolution and watching the sheriff department uh, change, is I don't believe that a lot of uh, previous sheriffs had really embraced 
that. I don't even think the one as of now is embracing the fact that your number one responsibility is the jail. Um, if we do that and we put all our resources in that area, I think we'll have less uh, issues at the jail. Uh, obviously, you can't do anything about brick and mortar. You can't do anything about the foundation. But what you can do is about structuring in terms of personnel in the department itself. So I believe that if we uh, take on the responsibility of making the main thing the main thing, mm -hmm. which is the jail, mm -hmm. I think we can uh, reduce some of those uh, escapes that have happened over the years. There's been, I want to say, 10 out of the Raymond Detention Center and three uh, out of the uh, Henley Young Patent Juvenile Justice Center over the last 18 months. And so I think that speaks to a lot of things, but I think what it speaks to mostly is leadership, and leadership matters. And let's talk about, the, you mentioned um, Henley Young Patton. Okay, so for, for people who don't know, the Raymond Detention Center is under the Sheriff's Department. Correct. Henley Young Patton is under the, the county. The Board offices. of Supervisors, correct. So with the two, um, under different authorities, um, in, with you having worked at both, we know now that there are offenders in the Youth Detention Center as young as 10, 11, 12, 13. How do you take the young men, with them being under different authorities, mm -hmm. you want to try to keep the youth who are in the youth detention center out of trouble enough where they never make it into the Raymond Detention Center. Sure. What would you do for youth offenders to get them rehabilitated, trained into a workforce back in school, to keep them out of trouble so they don't ever see the Raymond Detention Center, so they don't ever see the sheriff? That is such a great question, and let me answer it this way, because having, as you say, been party to both systems, one of the flaws that I've seen, and unlike my opponent, I am lobbying Aaron to make sure that all detention centers come under the Sheriff's Department. Something is fundamentally wrong for a Board of Supervisors to be over a detention center, which they have no training on. Uh, I believe that anything that deals with detention or jails should be under the Sheriff's Department. Again, that's their number one responsibility. So I would lobby the uh, incoming board uh, to put all detention services under the Sheriff's Department. And when I talk about all detention services, you got to think about it. Only, as you said, the only detention center that the Sheriff is over is one in Raymond. I'm lobbying to make sure we get the one downtown back. Uh, I'm lobbying that we get the Henley Young Patent Juvenile Justice. So when we consolidate those systems, I think they will be more functional. I think one of the things that I'm seeing in the current system and the way it's set up is dysfunction. And you know nothing can operate successfully in dysfunction, uh, even if it's organized dysfunction, right? Uh, at the end of the day, I think that we do that. And then one of the things I want to reincorporate, if I will, back into the Sheriff's Department is the educational system, right? When I was the uh, deputy director, well, actually the uh, director of dropout recovery at Heinz Community College, one of the things I implemented was this uh, GD program, uh, which no longer exists. Uh, and we also introduced them to vocational technical training. Mm -hmm. So putting them in a controlled environment and giving them opportunities to continue their education, mm -hmm. get a vocational technical skill set, well, I believe will discourage them from committing crimes, quite frankly, because if we can help them make a living wage, or a honest wage, or even a heightened wage, mm -hmm. I think that that would certainly reduce the level of crime in that population. And so I'm big on education. I am an educator. As mm -hmm. you know, I teach at the I Love Jack State <laughs> University in both criminal justice and political science, and also teach at Highlands Community College. So I believe uh, that experience that I have is invaluable as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, um, my, my gra I have a graduate degree and um, two degrees in criminal justice and a graduate degree in uh, public policy administration. Mm -hmm. And that latter degree, I think, is so important because this position, Aaron, as you know, is an administrative position, mm -hmm. right? Uh, our days of kicking in doors and chasing down bad guys, over with. I'm a little too long in the tooth for that. But what I can do is make sure I'm putting policies and procedures in place mm -hmm. to ensure that we have efficient and effective uh, governance in uh, these departments. And so, you know, with this do job as an administrator, you are over the largest uh, sheriff's department in the state of Mississippi, right? Mm -hmm. You have uh, the responsibility of hiring and uh, discipline and, 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 and all those things that go along with human resources. Mm -hmm. You have to, what, manage a budget, mm -hmm. uh, uh, somewhere of a 21 plus million dollar budget. And you also have to make sure that you work collectively and collaboratively with mm -hmm. eight separate incorpor I mean, yeah, incorporated municipalities. Mm -hmm. And so that experience experience uh, doesn't come uh, easy. And I've uh, put a lot of work in in these 30 years in public service to make sure I'm adequately prepared for the job that I'm seeking. I think it really speaks to capacity mm -hmm. and competency. I think the voters have to be encouraged to go to the polls on August 8th 
And Pete put the folks in office that are most qualified and not the most likable. I can't say that enough. Uh, it, it is consequences to uh, erring on the side of popularity in the real world. You and I, I think you went to public schools, right? Oh, yeah. I did, too. <laughs> and so in public schools, you know, uh, when people run for certain offices in public school, like most likely to succeed, what they look for is what? Likeability. Uh, the most popular person gets uh, promoted or gets uh, elected to spaces like uh, most likely to succeed. But what we don't do, Aaron, when we vote like that, we don't look at their GPA, right? Mm -hmm. And if their GPA is below a 2.0, the question is, how are they going to succeed? Mm -hmm. And so my point with saying all that is, is that when you do it in the real world, particularly when you do it in elections, mm -hmm. it's costly. And so I think that we have to be more inclined to put the most qualified person in these offices. And I really believe, I really believe this, that the, the, the results will be much better than what we're seeing right now. Absolutely. All right. And we do want to give you a chance to address um, the situation with you. We know mm -hmm. that you do have the federal indictments yeah. um, that you are under and you have continued to run because, yeah. again, you have charged. But have not gone to trial, there's no conviction. And we do want to give you the chance to address that here in this platform sure. and anything that you'd like to say about that. What do you have to say about the federal indictment? Well, first of all, let me just say I am so proud of my experience in the criminal justice system. And one of the things I value the most is the two constitutions that I fought for for 20 some years, the United States Constitution and the Constitution of the State of Mississippi. And each one of those constitutions speaks to articles that uh, allow a person to be presumed innocent and to proven otherwise are guilty. Uh, one of the things I've noticed in this particular election is that there is something amiss uh, in terms of how this indictment came down, the timing that it came down, and the charge that they're uh, suggesting. You have known me, Aaron, I want to say 30 years. You've seen me in the public space for a long time, and I don't believe I challenge anyone to find any accusation of impropriety that I've committed in 30 years. And you don't wait till you get almost 55 years old to turn absolutely stupid, okay? So I, I absolutely understand what's going on. I think the citizens of Hines County understand what's going on. This is what I call interference, and uh, it's, un it's unfortunate uh, that it has come about the way it has because these are the type of things that our forefathers and our uh, pioneers uh, in the civil rights movement fought against. This is what causes disenfranchisement. This was called voter uh, uh, disinformation. Uh, so I'm, I'm saddened that it happened, but I'm also encouraged because the people are talking in the uh, communities and they see exactly what's going on. They know uh, that this doesn't pass the smell test, uh, but I have a great attorney and uh, I love uh, the process and I look forward to my day in court because again, um, my record speaks for itself and I'm actually running on my record. So, um, and right now I don't have a criminal record because I haven't done anything criminal. Marshawn Chrysler, we wanted to also, again, give you that chance to have your say about that and on everything else with our conversation with you. Thank you so much for having this time with us. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. We are back in just a moment. Welcome back. We're now joined by Hines County Sheriff Tyree Jones, who is running for re-election. He served for 20 years with the Jackson Police Department, serving as a robbery homicide detective, a DEA task force person and eventually as commander of JPD, then going to the sheriff's office. We welcome Tyree Jones. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know that was a, a great one right there, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, of course I am up for re-election and I will say it has been absolutely an honor mm -hmm. to be able to serve the citizens of Hines County in this capacity. Mm -hmm. This is pretty much a lifelong dream come true for me mm -hmm. to be able to serve in this capacity. So I will say that I'm very humble mm -hmm. and I'm very thankful for the citizens of Hines County to abide their trust in me in this position. As you know, I've been a servant of this community for over the last 23 plus years, mm -hmm. serving 20 years with the Jackson Police Department and about two years prior to being elected as sheriff of Hines County after the special election. So. I want to look forward to continuing to serve in this role. Mm -hmm. Of course, I am uh, completing an uninspired term of the late Sheriff Lee Vance, and I'm asking the citizens of Hines County for an opportunity to serve a four-year term as your mm -hmm. Sheriff of Hines County. And you always say you're not a politician. You know, law enforcement is such a unique thing. Tell us more about what you bring to this position and to this job. You're absolutely right. I'm not a politician. I consider myself a servant of the community. Mm -hmm. In this particular role, you're actually serving the people. Mm -hmm. You are responding to their needs. And not only that, you are providing public safety measurements for the whole county 
mm-hmm. of Hines County. And you have to also be able to work collectively with all agencies within Hines County mm-hmm. to address some of the dire issues that we're facing in Hines County as well. So throughout my career, that's what I have been doing. That's what I have the expertise and the experience in doing is serving the people, answering their call for service, being able to effectively provide leadership to the citizens of Hines County and the men and women of the Hines County Sheriff's Office because regardless, they are the ones that are out serving the people on a day-to-day basis. And I just look to provide effective and efficient leadership to them while they are doing that. And I know partnerships, that's a big thing. I know the Sheriff's Department has always done partnerships, especially with the Jackson Police Department, but now you all have a, a unique thing going on now because Capitol Police, they're involved. And um, y'all have done a lot of crime fighting together. Talk more about the partnerships that you all are doing right now. Well, before we go into partnerships, let's first of all talk about the, the staffing shortage mm-hmm. of law enforcement agencies. Yeah. Uh, we have to be transparent about that. And that's not mm-hmm. just in the city of Jackson. It's not just Hines County, it's not just the state of Mississippi, it's nationwide. Mm -hmm. So with that being where we are facing and some of the times that we're facing right now, that even more shows why you have to have effective partnerships across the board. You have to be able to work with both uh, local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies Mm -hmm. to address some of the issues that we're facing in our communities today. So uh, I do have those partnerships and I have those relationships Some of them have been in existence for many, many years, Mm -hmm. dating all the way back to when I became a police officer. Mm -hmm. I can remember some of the officers that I uh, first got acquainted with, with the Jackson Police Department. Mm -hmm. They are department heads right here in Hines County as well. So we have always forged those relationships and those partnerships. So the only thing that we can do at this particular point is continue to make them stronger, to be able to provide more resources to the partnerships that we have in existence as well. And you talk about transparency, and you talk about issues. I know uh, you get dinged a lot about the jail, the Raymond Detention Center and the jail, um, and um, staffing there. Talk more about what's being done to boost the staffing and, and to get things done there at the Raymond Detention Center. So you're absolutely right. The first thing we have to do is be, be transparent about the issue. Mm-hmm. It's no secret that we have faced some really serious and dire times Uh, with our detention services dating all the way back to probably several decades ago since the inception of that facility due to the poor uh, maintenance and poor physical plant of that facility as well. And as a result, just like I mentioned earlier, Mm -hmm. staffing is just short nationwide. It's hard to be able to effectively recruit and retain personnel. But I will say this, I had a five-point plan coming into office, Mm -hmm. and the number one thing on my five-point plan was recruitment and retention. Being able to effectively recruit officers and deputies to come and work for the Hines County Sheriff's Office and to be able to retain some of the ones that we have as well. So back to the Raymond Detention Center, I will say that we have put more security measurements in place due to some of the issues that we've recently faced. Another thing that we've done, we have provided an historical pay raise for our deputies as well as our detention officers Mm -hmm. as well. When I first came into office, a detention officer was making $29,000. Two months into my administration, we got them up to $31,000. And just here, Mm -hmm. this last week, we were able to get them up to a starting pay of $35,000. So this puts us in a better bracket to be able to recruit and retain our personnel. And since that pay raise has passed just earlier this week, we do have detention officers that have contacted us and they're interested in coming back to work for the Hines County Sheriff's Office as well. well that's good. That's good. Some of that um, institutional knowledge coming back in there. Exactly. Okay, so you do a lot in the community and I know you see a lot of young people. Uh, you want to see those young people probably go to school and not into the jail system. That's right. A lot of misunderstanding uh, is out there. People think that you, as the sheriff or the sheriff's department, run the Henley Young Patton Youth Detention Center. Two separate facilities run by two different agencies. The county is over the Youth Detention Center. Um, so with that being said, what is, would you do um, to encourage young people to stay out of trouble, the, the programs that are being done, to keep them out of trouble so they don't see the inside of your facility? You're absolutely right. So what we have to do, we have to be able to connect with all stakeholders in our community mm-hmm. and work effectively with them. We have faith-based organizations. Mm-hmm. We have nonprofit organizations. I'm also a board member 
of the Boys and Girls Club of Central Mississippi as, as well. So I'm pretty much in the room regarding decisions, regarding that organization and things that we can do to help benefit our youth as well. So I think that there's a level of accountability, of accountability as well when we address our youth. You know, we know there are precursors that are there before they graduate, as I would say, into some of your more serious and violent crimes. There have to be a level of accountability before they get to that particular point. If not, they will find themselves on the other side of the law and they will find themselves in a detention facility as well. And another thing that's very important, Aaron, is the fact that, you know, we think about the Henley Young Patton Youth Detention Center. You're absolutely right. I have absolutely no oversight of that facility. It falls under the administration of the county administrator. Mm -hmm. However, there are juveniles at that facility that we call JCAs. Mm -hmm. They're juveniles charged as adults, right. meaning they have committed a crime with a gun and they have been charged as an adult or the crime that they committed fitted the criteria to be charged as an adult as well. Right. So once they turn 18, they come out of that facility and they mm -hmm. come to the Raymond Detention Center. So we have to be able to connect with everybody to keep our young people out of jail and to keep them from finding themselves on the other side of the law. And another thing while we're still on this subject, you know, I, I'm not a fan of taking young people in a jail to scare them. Mm -hmm. I think that we have an obligation to be able to educate them on what not to do mm -hmm. to keep them from finding themselves in that particular situation. Right. Yeah, I think we grew up watching the show Scared Straight. And, you know, yeah, Scared thought. Straight <laughs> and you have, um, you know, sometimes you may be somewhere and you have a kid that's acting up and a parent say, there goes the police, I'm going to make him get you. No, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get you a child. Right. That's your responsibility. Right. But at that particular time, sometimes what we face is you have made that child become scared of the and police, police. Yes. when they're supposed to be able to trust us in the job that we do daily as well. Mm -hmm. And that's true, because in the community there's, there's that. You know, so many little kids, they have that fear of the police, and that's exactly what you don't want, especially in this day and age. You want them to trust the police, yes. to you know, be encouraged by the police, not to fear the police. So. That's absolutely right. Exactly. Okay, so this is your second time running for sheriff. Uh, again, not a politician, uh, servant, but what have you learned uh, in the political process and this time around? Uh, what are you doing differently or what have you learned from this whole thing? Well, you know, since I've been in office, I do understand that politics do play a major role mm -hmm. in the office of the sheriff. But at the same time, I've been able to position myself where I can remain neutral mm -hmm. when it comes to politics. I'm about serving the people mm -hmm. and I'm about taking care of the needs of the sheriff's office as well as valuing my employees mm -hmm. at the sheriff's office as well. So as a result of that, I have to be able to court those that are responsible for the funding for the sheriff's office, all the way from our local elected officials to our statewide elected officials to our uh, federal and uh, federal government and nationwide elected officials as well, to be able to have that network and that relationship between everybody. Because ultimately, what I want to be able to do is provide more resources for Hines County, for my department, and for the men and women of the department as well. And of course, like I said, I do understand that politics do come into play, but I will say this, every time I've gone to our board of supervisors mm -hmm. and asked them for something that would benefit the Hines County Sheriff's Office, the men and women of the Hines County Sheriff's Office, I presented it as a uh, public safety investment. You are investing in public safety. Therefore, I was able to get some of the resources and needed things that I need for my department and the men and women of my department as well. Yeah, because the um, raise that just came about here a couple of days ago, this is the second one in about a year and a half. Well, that's the second raise for detention officers. Mm -hmm. You know, several months ago, mm -hmm. we were able to get our operational deputies mm -hmm. up to uh, $40,000. So mm -hmm. When I first came into office, they were still making $29,454 mm -hmm. a year. I'm the highest paid sheriff in the state of Mississippi, mm -hmm. and 